Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller, your integration coach, and I'm bringing you another question for today's sauna Q&A. In case you missed the first video, I'm going to check out this new formula to see how you guys feel about this. I'm going to do each question in separate little mini videos instead of one really long video with time marks. That way maybe people just see the titles and they can scroll through to what they really want to hear. Even though I do hear some emails from people saying that you know they really like to tune into all the questions because they get value from them, even if that's not their exact particular situation, there's a lot of similarities that really help empower them. So let me know in the question, I mean in the comments, what you guys think. And I'm gonna start with this email right now. It says, hey Meredith, I'm from the Netherlands and had a typical relationship with a covert narc. I think there is so much proof, but he denied everything, that he is bisexual or even gay. But in his culture, a Reuben, that's a no-go. He's been neglected and abused as a child, and his own family accused him from an early age of being gay because he's a dancer. I felt used to be his cover to prove everyone wrong, and of course for a lot of other things. My question is, if this gay issue is happening more, did you hear similar stories? Also, he said all the time that he never experienced a relationship like this before, that I'm the one that did everything wrong, that this was new for him. He said that he had a lot of girl exes, but I never knew who they were. Is that also a narc thing? Like, they do this toxic relationship is all new to them and it's your fault. You helped me to get out and recover so much faster by explaining so good what's happening. I'm so grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you're tuning in and figuring out what's going on. So, okay, the situation with your covert narc. Um, so he, he's lying to you, apparently, about his sexuality. And that's one of many things that a narcissist can lie about. I have heard this kind of story now and then, not nearly as often as, you know, the cheating stories and the multiple mistresses or multiple guys in the woman's life, you know, and that sort of situation. Every now and then I hear somebody bring up this sort of thing where, you know, it's possible that their partner is gay or lesbian and is maybe ashamed to admit that you know you mentioned his culture he's a reuben that's a no-go in his culture it could be you know that it, it, he's just ashamed because of where he came from and the belief systems that were ingrained in him you know since a child to admit who he is and therefore you know he marries a heterosexual person and has a heterosexual relationship but you know hates it and hates himself even more because he's not being true to himself I mean there could be all sorts of things like this going on um, you know but this is it's still the same idea of where the narcissist or the sociopath or psychopath will marry someone to portray the image of the ideal citizen in society it's no different than a straight sociopath who marries a woman and has a family just so that he can masquerade as the family man, you know, and the husband. And nobody really suspects, you know, all of the atrocities that he's committing at the corporate level, you know, or in society or in the governmental level or something because he appears to be, you know, this family man. And the same thing could happen with women, right? I mean, I've even known people who told me that they knew women who were in these high positions in either governmental organizations or corporations and essentially sociopaths doing the exact same thing, pretending to have this husband and family that they cared about but actually didn't care about at all. So that's more the pattern. It's, it's not really the gay straight thing. It's more about the portraying this image that he wants to create in society. Um, you know, the, the image he wants people to have of him, which is the most important thing to a narcissistic person. Uh, the part where you said, you know, he says all the time how he never experienced a relationship like this. You know, you did everything wrong. This is all new to him. Yeah, this is common. You know, how many of you heard that before? Or like, oh, I've never argued with anybody before. It's just you. You know, I've never had this jealousy problem before with a person. It's just you. You're just jealous and possessive, you know, that he's in contact or she's in contact with all their exes and 
or these other you know people that they're bringing in and they're always talking about and everything um so yeah when you hear that kind of stuff you know grain of salt just dismiss that you know the reality the narc always tries to get you to think it's your fault that's how they manipulate you by creating that false sense of guilt if they can throw that false sense of guilt on you they know that you have a healthy conscience unlike them your conscience is going to second guess yourself and you're going to take on that weight of the guilt even though it's false guilt and you did nothing wrong because you're more willing to doubt yourself and believe another person so you know one of the things that you need to work on is your sense of internal approval Okay, you gotta start giving yourself that sense of internal approval so that you're not looking outside of yourself for people to tell you who you are or what you're doing is right or wrong or that you know it's all your fault or it isn't your fault. You know, you gotta know and you gotta trust yourself first and foremost. That's what I would work on. You know, I would work on noticing every time you transfer your approval outside of yourself, every time you're looking outside of yourself for someone else's permission you know, or for them to acknowledge what you're doing, or for them to vindicate you, you got to do that for yourself. Don't count on anyone else to do that. In fact, other people will respond to how you feel about yourself. So put yourself first, okay, because you've probably been putting yourself last, you know, and other people first entirely too much, which is how this guy got in with you. So now it's time to flip the tables, okay. Um, so yeah, if he can go ahead and think that this is all new for him and he can talk about his exes, you just didn't know who they were, who cares? Who cares about his past? If I were you, I wouldn't invest a single moment or a single iota more of energy or time in thinking about that guy's past and who he is and what he wants to be and whether he's confused about his sexuality. Like I would seriously have no more fucks to give. I think you said you're from the Netherlands. Sorry, that's a little bit of slang. Um, but over here, that means like you just don't care, okay? Like you just don't care. Whatever his past is, whatever his drama is, whatever he's trying to create, you just don't care. Just don't invest your energy and time in that anymore because it's just gonna spin your head. It is much better to focus that on your self-care, on taking care of you, on you know eating right, on exercising right, on minding your inner dialogue, your self-talk. How are you talking to yourself? Where are your thoughts going? Where is your mind going all day? What kind of emotional responses are you having to your thoughts? Do you not want to have those same emotional responses? Then you need to change your thoughts. Every time you think about him and you catch yourself, you know, ruminating on, well, well, who is he really or what really happened in his past and blah, blah, blah. Tell yourself, okay, cancel, cancel, cancel or delete, delete, delete. And then redirect your mind towards something that you actually want to focus on, like your career, your family, your friendships, your sense of fulfillment, your sense of purpose and passion and fun and joy, that's where you wanna invest your energy and time, not in analyzing him, okay? Um, he Also, you said here, um, you know, okay, so is it a narc thing, you know, this whole idea of is this being the, the first toxic relationship and it's all your fault? Yes, it's a narc thing. It happens all the time. And sometimes what will happen is just the opposite. They're like, this always happens. It's always everybody else's fault. You know, my partners are always just jealous of all the people I have in my life or this and that and the other. So it, they can play it in either way, you know, but both of those are essentially the same bottom line. Um, so I'm really happy that you're working on yourself, that you're working on your recovery. Hopefully this will help you to just put that to bed, you know, like to stop thinking about that, to stop feeling like it's your fault, to stop taking on that responsibility, which is not yours. Accept 100% responsibility for you and your actions, for how you show up in the moment, meaning the decisions you make, the actions you take, the attitudes you have, the emotional states that you're allowing yourself to have, because we allow those emotional states. We choose that. We think it's all out of our control and we're just, you know, the passive victim to all this happening sometimes, but the reality is that that is your responsibility. 
It is your 100% responsibility and it is no one else's responsibility. If you don't like your emotional state, you need to change it. If you realize that the problem with your emotional state is that you're hanging out with the wrong person and it's like near impossible to maintain a healthy emotional state when you're with them and that when you're out and away from them for a while, man, you're feeling so much better, you're back to yourself and then you're back there with them and you feel like crap. Well, you know, instead of staying in the situation and just keep blaming that other person, remove yourself from the situation. Stop allowing people like that to contaminate your energy, to make you feel bad about yourself, to, you know, make you feel like you're out of control with your emotions, to make you, you know, just always feeling like you're swimming in the muck, trying to get out of there. You want to take responsibility and make that cut so that you can protect your life, so that you can protect your energy, you can protect your time, you can protect your well-being, your health, and your sanity. Don't hang out with those people. Okay, that's on you. That's your responsibility. And only you will know where that line is. You gotta decide where is that line. You know, are you ready to draw that now? Have you seen enough? Or are you still gonna hang out for a little while longer? Are you still trying to understand what's going on? You know, I don't recommend that path because it's just gonna lead you to exhaustion. It's gonna lead you to physiological problems because once the mental, psychological stress is too much, to handle the body will start to express that stress. You know, it's gonna be autoimmune problems, inflammation, down the road it ends up being things like cancer. You know, so you wanna take control of that and recognize that you gotta own 100% responsibility for your life. If you don't like the situation in your life, you gotta change that. If you don't like the people you're hanging out with, stop trying to change them, stop focusing on them and focus on you. Focus on you. What do you need to change? And maybe the most simple first start is to get out of that situation, to stop hanging out with people like that. And then you can go work on yourself. You know, but while you're in that situation, you can manage it, but it's like being on the gerbil wheel. You're just like running, 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 running on this wheel. And what are you gonna do? Right? Because you're just gonna be exhausted. You're not gonna get anywhere. You're just always gonna be working, 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 trying to resolve the unresolvable problems of this relationship because there's always gonna be another unresolvable problem and it's always gonna be put on you, you know, unless you remove yourself from that relationship and then start working on your healing and well being. So, you know, that sense of approval, it's gotta come from inside. It's gotta come from inside. Dr. Sean Stevenson said, you know, in the seminar that I went to a couple weeks ago, you know, we're all seeking the sense of approval from other people. We're just these weird creatures as humans. But the reality is like there is no sense of approval that feels so good as that which you give yourself. So it's really wasted time and energy looking for approval outside of yourself. That's something that you probably learned in childhood growing up in, in a similar but possibly different kind of dynamic with your primary caretakers or your parents. So recognize that now as an adult, <clears throat> it's on you to take care of that, to take control of your life, to decide who belongs in your life and not, and to decide you know, who you are and who you are not. If someone is trying to tell you that you're someone that you're not, that all of this is your responsibility and you know that it's not, you know you need to make that cut and get away from that person and stop trying to rationalize with that person because you're not gonna get anywhere. Okay, I'm sending you a big hug.